Hey, good day to everybody on YouTube. I wanted to uh, give you guys a quick tour of, uh, of a new device that we uh, are just launching this week. It's, uh, it's our new 787 Dreamliner um, FBPT, or Fixed Base Procedural Trainer. So this particular unit is, um, was actually built for Boeing. They will be uh, working with Korean Airlines, who is going to be using it in Seoul, Korea, as a kind of a recruitment piece and a kind of a promotional element for uh, promoting the 787 Dreamliner, which is now part of their fleet. They're also trying to encourage people to think of piloting as a career because there's definitely a shortage of, of pilots worldwide. So this is uh, part of getting people encouraged and pushed into that type of thing. So uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, I guess, flip the camera and we'll walk into the production area and get a good peek at this thing and give you a, a, a look over at uh, what we did to put this thing together, all the different elements, and then I'll hand off to Steve at, at some point to talk a little bit about some of the features of 787 uh, from our side hardware and then also with Mark's Simavionics software which was embedded into the device and integrated. Um, anyway, over to that. Talk to you in a sec. So here's the new Flight Deck Solutions 787 device that we've been building. Uh, this is actually our second piece. First one already in Japan, up and running. And this particular one was built for Boeing um, to be used with Korean Airlines for a promotional piece for promoting the Dreamliner, promoting pilot training, that sort of thing. So there are real 787 seats in here, which are quite something to see. Uh, not something I think I could ever supply, not with the price tag that we saw that they had. But uh, I wanted to show you the kind of detail that went into this particular piece. Nice side bins, all done out of uh, aluminum, laser cut, powder coat finish. We have windows normally on. We took them off because we're just about to ship. Uh, Full-blown overhead, clearly. Nice shape, 787 kind of overhead shapes like you see on the real aircraft. We did not put a HUD in. No, not yet. That might be something down the road. The dual tillers, we've got iPads in there for EFB units. Uh, that's completely done. We do use uh, real 767 yokes, uh, and then we custom make the columns and all the mechanical elements that go down below. We have our rudder pedals that are 787 styled. Uh, those are all adjustable. We come over here, we see all the screens. A little bit of glare there, apologies. It looks worse on the camera, I think. Um, so DCPs, display control panels instead of EFAS panels. Mode control panel, and then obviously first officer's DCP, display control panel four large format displays, functional ISFD, MKPs are functional, all kinds of displays and goodies. I might get Steve to pop on here in a second and show you a little bit more. Again, fully motorized throttle, control cursor device, parking brake units. The RTPs are, uh, are not functional here yet. We have those in production shortly. They will be functional as per the real aircraft. So there's three replica pieces sitting there right now. But I uh, just wanted to give people a good look at what we've been up to. We've been kind of quiet lately with a few things. Not too quiet. I guess we did the max. So that wasn't very quiet. But uh, here's the outside portion of the, of the device. And this one is, uh, it goes together quite nicely, actually. The guys were quite pleased with how the shell went together. It took a bit of work. You can see the windows, how huge they are. I remember the first time I sat in a, in a 787 FTD. It just felt like you could fall out the windows. Luckily, they don't open. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would happen. But anyway, just wanted to give people a quick peek at, uh, at this particular unit. We're very proud of it, clearly. And uh, looking forward to doing some more 787 devices with, uh, with customers for commercial or entertainment and even our enthusiast customers. We've got quite a few that are quite eager to take a look at that and, uh, and see what we can do. Anyways, I'll hand you over to Steve in a second. And uh, from there, I look forward to talking to you by email or by phone. Cheers. There, back with, uh, with my brother Steve. Just going to do a quick handoff to him. He wants to show a little bit about some of the displays and some of the unique things about 787s. And uh, I know he's doing a little test flying. He's working with Mark uh, from Sim Avionics, who's actually done all the software for this one. So that's kind of a big step for Mark as well. So now he's got 73, 777, and 78. Uh, very, very cool. So over to Steve over here. And hey, Steve, how's it going? Good, good. <laughs> Loving the 78. I bet you are. And just wanted to point out a few things on the DCP panels, uh, the range selection, where you, instead of a selector, it's actually an encoder. You actually do click by click. That's like the 737 MAX too, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, we showed, that first showed up, I think, on the 747-8, right? Yes. So all the new generation exactly right. aircraft. Yeah. Cool. And also, we can do 
different things by changing screens around so we can move the iCast screen, the engine display, to the FO side and have a full uh, ND where you see the whole screen becomes the ND where you can bring up all the features. And then you can bring up the weather, there's the traffic, and the terrain. Right. So there's a little bit of and weather. And VSD, that vertical situational yeah. display. That's right. So the... Oh, I got you, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> we'll come back around to that. Yeah, no, it's right here. We're can bring it up. We'll circle back. Yeah. And the, uh, so we Actually, it's over there. there on that piece yeah. there, right? That's right. And that can be turned on and, on and off, right? Yeah. And then you, I think you had some airport screens up too, right? Is yeah. that something so that you were doing? Sitting on the airport, you can zoom. If you bring the zoom back... And that's part of that rotary piece, right? Yeah. Nice, okay. So I just want to get rid of some of this stuff here. There. It has to draw the maps. Yeah, right, eh? So yeah, there's the that's airport. crazy, eh? So you see 3 3 right, 3 3 left, all the gates, all the uh, taxiways are labeled. So if someone tells you, right. you, know, you know, turn to Charlie 1 and a right turn on to Juliet, you can actually see where you are when yeah, you're moving. Yeah, wickedly cool, right? So, yeah. so that ties into, into the database that's in P3D. So it's not like you got to add anything extra to it. Yeah. It's, that's data that's already there. Yeah, Mark's extracting it from yeah. P3D and uh, injecting it into Simavionics. That's right. If you got add it. on scenery, it's a sing. It, it grabs Very all cool. these gates and everything. Yeah, cool. So then you can zoom your way out again. So then no CDUs on this. So we're now we're using basically MKPs. They're called their multi-keypad. I think it's multi-keypad yeah. controllers, I guess. But they call them MKPs, right? Yeah. So no screen, but you got all the buttons and everything, right? Right. So I know there are some features, if you bring it over... Speaking you of that, you're using the control cursor device yeah. right there. Yeah. CCD. You can bring up different things, but you need you need the, to input things from the MKP panel here with your numbers and your yep. letters, and there's a few keys that you can select for different. And that, things. that shows the execute, in the lower the lower yeah, panel. And the execute key now is over here with the light. You press that. You get your next page, previous page. So very similar to a CDU. It's just you have a screen and you have a, a keypad on the side. Now right. Instead. Okay. So a lot of those different features there. Yeah, I was talking about the, the RTPs earlier. These are not the functional ones yet, but, but they're pretty comprehensive with all the radios and transponders, and I think even some weather elements are mixed into, the, into these devices mm -hmm. as well, they which are. will be kind of, they're kind of like mini CDUs almost, yeah. eh? Yeah. So that's kind of a piece, and then there's three of them, just like a triple uh, would have, and then obviously audio control panels, rudder trim, they've cleaned up a lot of stuff. That's I right. think the other funny one too is, I think you and I always got a laugh when we first saw this uh, overhead with, with the, the CCR pieces. I remember you and I looking at those and asking the guys from Boeing what CCR reset meant and they basically told us it was kind of their their their, their version of alt control delete. Yeah. So you could actually shut down computers and, and things like that and them. reboot them because yeah. there's no there's no circuit breakers obviously right. for the pilot so it's it's quite a different scenario than yeah. than what we're used to. Hey, that's great. You know, I just wanted to, to review this with you. Uh, I did mention that this was built uh, in conjunction uh, for you know, with Boeing actually for them for a, a Korean Airlines scenario that we're doing with them, mm -hmm. uh, and pretty pumped. Appreciate everything you've done on this. Mark did an awesome job, and the yeah, whole Flight great. Deck Solutions team, uh, you know, has basically done their thing. So, cheers to everybody. Want to show you this in video as well as watch for a panoramic. There'll be that image coming up, and then we'll have some pictures of the of the piece as well on the website soon. But definitely on Facebook first. And uh, if you have any questions about any of our products, you know, feel free to call or email. We're happy to talk to you. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.